Fifty years ago, one of the most audacious escapes in Irish prison history took place at Mountjoy Prison in Dublin. With the aid of a helicopter, three members of the Provisional IRA ascended into the heavens and to freedom. In this video, we'll take a look at how they planned and executed this outrageous escape, and also what happened to these men afterwards. Following the outbreak of the Troubles in Northern Ireland in the late 1960s, the Provisional IRA had conducted an armed campaign that sought to create a united Ireland by ending Northern Ireland's status as part of the United Kingdom. As a result of the increasing levels of violence in Northern Ireland, internment without trial was introduced there in August of 1971, and here in the Republic of Ireland, the coalition government led by Fine Gael's Liam Cosgrave was attempting to curb IRA activity. Fine Gael at the time had come to power on a ticket of law and order and a policy of getting tough on crime. Suspected IRA members were rounded up and charged under the Offences Against the State Act. They would then be sent for trial in the juryless Special Criminal Court in Dublin. The IRA had a traditional policy of not recognising the court resulting in a fait accompli as no defence was offered. IRA membership carried a minimum mandatory one year sentence resulting in internment in all but name. In September of 1973, IRA Chief of Staff Seamus Toomey appeared before the Special Criminal Court charged with IRA membership. He was found guilty and received a five-year sentence, and by October 1973, the IRA's command structure was seriously curbed, with Toomey and other senior Republicans such as J.B. O'Hagan and Kevin Mallon all being held in Mountjoy Prison. The IRA immediately began making plans to break Toomey, O'Hagan and Mallon out of Mountjoy Prison. The first attempt involved explosives that had been smuggled into the prison, which were to be used to blow a hole in a door which would give the prisoners access to the exercise yard. From there they would then scale a rope ladder which was to be thrown over the exterior wall by members of the IRA's Dublin Brigade who would have a getaway car waiting to complete the escape. This plan ultimately failed when the prisoners couldn't gain access to the exercise yard and the rope ladder was also spotted. The IRA now had the task of going back to the drawing board and formulating some new escape plans. The idea of using a helicopter for an escape attempt was not a new one to the IRA because it had been discussed before. An idea to break Jerry Adams out of Long Kesh internment camp had been ruled out because of faster, more sophisticated British Army helicopters being stationed at a nearby base. But things would be very different down south in the Republic as the Irish Army and also the Gardaí were very poorly equipped at the time. Senior IRA members approved the plan to break out Toomey, O'Hagan and Mallon and arrangements were then made to obtain a helicopter. On Monday the 29th of October 1973, a man calling himself Mr. Leonard entered Irish helicopters offices at Dublin Airport. Mr. Leonard said he wished to hire a helicopter for Wednesday the 31st of October. It's purported that he spoke with a fake American accent and wore a white suit. He explained that he had been doing some film making in County Leash and had left his equipment behind there. He required the helicopter to go down there and pick up his equipment. Initially, the staff at Irish helicopters tried to dissuade him from using the helicopter, stating that it would be cheaper for him to hire a van and drive down there to collect his equipment, as the helicopter was going to cost him £75 an hour to hire out. But Mr Leonard was insistent on hiring the helicopter, so it was booked for that Wednesday, the 31st of October. When Mr Leonard arrived at Irish Helicopters on the Wednesday morning, both helicopter and pilot were ready and waiting to go. The pilot on the day was a man from New Tenards called Captain Thompson Boys. Mr Leonard boarded the helicopter and off they set for County Leash. But upon arriving in County Leash, things would take a turn for the worst. Before we continue on, I think it's important to take a minute to take a look at the interest in history that this helicopter had prior to coming into operation with Irish helicopters. The helicopter was an Aero Special Alouette II and had been in service with the French military. The helicopter most likely seen some service in Vietnam as a French General de Gaulle gifted the helicopter to the then Vietnamese leader's wife. The helicopter was then subsequently acquired by Irish helicopters. So a very colourful history for this little helicopter. But now let's get back to the prison escape. Mr Leonard and Captain Boys were now in the air on their way to County Leash. But as I said, upon landing in County Leash, things were about to turn sour. You, when you landed with Mr Leonard in the field in the south, what happened? Uh, 
There was two men approached the helicopter, heavily masked. What, what sort uh, of masks did they have? They looked like some nylon material, stocking, nylon stocking type thing, and uh, one of them came to the other door of the helicopter and uh, pointed the gun and says, right, we're, we're provost. What this, sort of gun was it, do you know? It was a revolver, I think. And the second man came to my door and gave me instructions to uh, go to Mount Joy Prison, pick up three prisoners and take them to Baldoyle. Did they say what would happen to you if you didn't agree? The, uh, the man at this side said, uh, if you file up this operation, uh, this man has instructions to shoot, shoot you. And you thought they were certainly being serious? I knew they were serious, yeah. Captain Boyes was instructed to fly towards Dublin following the path of railway lines in the Royal Canal and was ordered not to register his flight plan with air traffic control. So you flew to, to Mount Joy. Uh, was it a very difficult manoeuvre to land? It is land? a very difficult place to get into with a helicopter. Normally I wouldn't go into a, such a restricted area. It's, it's too hazardous. It's dangerous. As the helicopter approached Dublin, Captain Boyes was informed of the details of the escape plan. He was instructed to bring the helicopter in and land it in the exercise yard of Mountjoy Prison. In the prison yard, the prisoners were watching a football match. Shortly after 3.35pm in the afternoon, the helicopter swung in to land in the prison yard with Kevin Mallon directing the pilot using hand signals. A prison officer on duty in the yard initially believed the helicopter contained the Minister for Defence, Paddy Dunnigan. It said that the Minister used helicopters like other people would use state cars. The helicopter, he said, should have been noticed immediately it left its flight plan, that is, if it had ever had one. And he observed that prison officers had thought that the incoming helicopter had been carrying the Minister for Defence, who used helicopters, he said, like others use state cars. So perhaps he was popping in on an unannounced visit? After prisoners surrounded the eight prison officers on duty in the yard, fights broke out as the officers realised that an escape attempt was in progress. As other prisoners restrained the officers, Toomey, Mallon and O'Hagan boarded the helicopter. As the helicopter took off in the confusion, one officer shouted, close the gates, close the effing gates. So what did happen and when you uh, when you landed? Well, there was quite a bit of excitement, quite a bit of scuffling going on in, in the prison yard, men were running all over the place. Did the prisoners in fact have to scatter as your helicopter came down? Well, they did, they moved away from the, the centre of the yard. And three men ran and got in the back and uh, one of them closed the door. We were away again, I didn't wait too long. <laughs> After taking off from the prison, the helicopter flew north and landed at a disused race course in the Baldoyle area of Dublin, where the escapees were then met by members of the IRA's Dublin Brigade. The pilot, Captain Boyes, was released unharmed and the escapees were transferred to a taxi that had been hijacked earlier on O'Connell Street in Dublin city centre. They were then transported from there to safe houses. The escape made international headlines and was an embarrassment for Cosgrave's government. They were accused of incompetence in security matters by opposition party Fianna Fáil and an emergency debate on security was held in Dáil Éireann on the 1st of November. As you would well imagine, this was a major propaganda victory for the IRA. It also served as a great morale booster among those within the organisation. The IRA released a statement on the escape which read, Three Republican prisoners were rescued by a special unit from Mountjoy Prison on Wednesday. The operation was a complete success and the men are now safe, despite a massive hunt by free state forces. The escape resulted in all IRA prisoners being held at Mountjoy Prison being transferred to the maximum security prison at Port Leash. In order to prevent any further escapes, the perimeter of the prison was guarded by members of the Irish Army and wires were erected over the prison yard to prevent any future helicopter escape attempts. Taoiseach Liam Cosgrave stated that there would be no hiding place for escapees and a manhunt involving nearly 20,000 members of the Irish Defence Forces and on Garda Síochána ensued. A little over a month after the prison escape, Kevin Mallon was recaptured at a Gaelic Athletic Association dance in a hotel near Port Leash on the 10th of December 1973, and he was imprisoned in Port Leash Prison. Mallon escaped from there in a mass breakout on the 18th of August 1974, when 19 prisoners escaped after overpowering guards and using gelignite to blast through the gates. He was recaptured again in Fox Rock in January 1975 and returned to Port Leash Prison. J.B. O'Hagan was recaptured in Dublin in early 1975 and also imprisoned in Port Leash Prison. Seamus Toomey managed to evade recapture until the 2nd of December 1977 when he was spotted sitting in a car in Sandy Cove in Dublin by members of Angarda Síochána's special branch who were investigating an arms shipment after a tip-off from police in Belgium. 
He drove off after spotting the officers before being recaptured in the centre of Dublin after a high-speed car chase. He was also imprisoned in Port Leash Prison until his release in 1982. The reaction to the escape was international, with many newspapers from around the world covering the story. Shortly after the escape had happened, Seamus Toomey gave an exclusive interview to German magazine Der Spiegel, where the reporter said that people throughout Europe were calling the incident the escape of the century. Toomey went on to praise the planning and execution of the escape operation. Back at home, there was a mixed reaction of shock, outrage and excitement. There was a large public outcry that such an audacious escape attempt could even take place. The escape was somewhat of a black eye for Cosgrave's government and it came under heavy criticism. The escape was of great propaganda value to the IRA with it being likened to something out of a movie. This of course was seen as a major victory for the IRA and may have even led to a boost in recruitment. The escape also led to the writing of a song by Irish musicians The Wolf Tones called The Helicopter Song which celebrated the escape. It was immediately banned by the government here in Ireland yet still topped the Irish popular music charts after selling 12,000 copies in a single week. For obvious reasons I can't play a clip of the song but I will leave a link down below in the description if you do want to check it out for yourself. During the Troubles, heists, hijackings and prison escapes were the order of the day. Thankfully nowadays things were a lot quieter Either, but that's not to say that there aren't still tensions. A fragile peace remains but there are still sporadic instances of violence. Splinter groups are still active and carrying out operations and this still remains a security issue to authorities on both sides of the border. This has been a Degenerate Watch Degenerate Documentary production. Show your support for the channel by leaving a like, commenting below and sharing the video. Stay safe, take care and thank you for watching.